twice. I'm scared. We haven't played this stuff before. We're going to be playing the album from front to back, so here goes. <laughs> first single that we released, which is called Smash the Pinata. You also get the clip for anyone who's got the red package in their hand. Today you get the official clip, uh, which was done by Chris Fly, Brian Jeremy Roos. It's daytime. It's the daytime. It's a vampire. Well, um, let's stick on stuff it's over. All right, here we go. Respectful dancing is respectful of dog, I think. This calm spring makes me ashamed of myself. I should have said, could have done. I could have been a pretender is what I am. Oh yeah, I've read the books, studied the looks, but it's left me without action. And my point is that I have one. Of this world that's 
Those failings aren't going to be enough. I'm going to find a boy who gets the joint and have a glass of water. Huh? There are the losers, she said. Well, I bought him. So I guess there must be truth in the room. Some of you have probably read the bio, but uh, we went to a camp, a youth camp together, uh, and uh, we met and we played music together. It was a really good time for both of us. And the universe just kept putting us in each other's space, be it that pet ship booked and then cancelled an audition for my last band. Uh, we'd meet at gigs, we'd meet on Brunswick Street. We just bumped into each other a lot, and I knew that Pete was working with Pete Murray. And, I was doing the full scale thing and him and Nick had been working feverishly. So I walked into a studio uh, in St Kilda, just down the road. He brought up these tracks on Pro Tools which he'd been working on with Nick using BFD. And um, this was the first one he showed me and uh, I liked what I heard and we pretty much just dropped his vocal. So this was two and a half years ago and this is the very embryo of Mel. <laughs> Yeah. 
with just a touch of real attention has come into play because you're reading from a leaflet you won't up to date I want to feel it in my body that the people are free I want to find a cure for the cool disease that you have to look at the set list. Uh, this next song is the second single which uh, was played on Rage last night, is that correct? Yeah. So there's a bit of support coming through for the clips we did. Once again, once again um, a big amount of kudos to Chris Fry and Jeremy who uh, helped us out with those. They really did do a top job. Um, so um, this song's, uh, I think, the most confronting track on the record. Uh, we made it so on purpose, trying to draw some issues to the front uh, through using, hopefully, some uh, Kind of confrontation one, maybe shocking language, but you all look, you all look like a pretty free-minded people, so I'm sure you can cope. It's called, it's called the majority. The cold faggot nigga bitch of the minority. Thank you. 
quickly. Uh, sort of like in 25 minutes, came together after we'd been fluffing around the lifts, roofs for a while, and it was a real, I think it gave the recording a sort of sense of excitement because we'd uh, been working really hard on the other tracks. And it was good to know that we hadn't lost the spontaneity of the live record. We hadn't lost the spontaneity of the pace we recorded the EP at, even though we put more months of work into the album. So I, uh, I think we all think that there's a lot of spontaneity on the record. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's a big part of it, on even, even on an arrangement level. Uh, this next song is... Oh, Mr. Devlin, you might notice, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, Pete Williamson has busted out the Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> Things are changing in the mammal camp. <laughs> More excess baggage. Guru Swabos or whatever, Pedro Bala. Pedro used to be known as Guru Swabos. Seriously, 
Hey, so we're having a throw and play funk. That's Guru Suavos. YouTube it, see what you find. I think it was before YouTube. Oh, well, it's old school. But I think there's a little bit of Guru, Guru Suavos in that track, that last track. Thank you. 
uh, yeah, we've um, dug. We've just slightly broken your stage. <laughs> Only slightly, it's fixable. <laughs> Very sorry. We tried. I felt respect. Like I said, respect involved bouncing up and down at that point. But don't worry, all sorts of stuff along all that, you know. It's good. I don't think you can try and do an album more, should we just play through the tracks in a record shop, but something's always going to break at the time of show, I think. Or is it, is it risk of it? Oh, dearie me. I feel a little bad. It's going kind to of, kind of fuck my mojo a little bit. It's all good, bro. Yeah, dog. <laughs> I need to be here though. We need a sticker that says do not rock here. <laughs> um, this next song, uh, it's called Clear Enough. Um, Zane walked into a jam at Pedro's place. Uh, we were writing for the record and um, Pete and Nick had been working on this thing they called Metal Dub, which is they got these weird little titles that they put under the, on the Pro Tools tracks. And Zane walked in and just, he, he, I can't remember it verbatim, but I'll, I'll paraphrase it. He sort of said, you know, there's just all this crap being fed at me all day. There's all this stuff that I'm seeing and I, I don't know how to deal with it. It's, it's, it's actually fucking me up. It's mentally messing with me. The billboards, the television, the ideas of capitalism. Uh, let's write a song about it. Um, this song's, it's dark because it's about them and they are a dark bunch of people as capitalists. But we have light and this song's about recognising that through recognition of these, this darkness we can then turn our light upon it and lighten it up.
picture that's clear enough? Have I painted a portrait or picture that's clear enough? Have I painted a portrait or picture that's clear? Thank you very much. So, this next track is, uh, oh, hang on, this is, uh, so we're, you know how we're trying to do the studio thing, desperately trying to get it right. Um, we're really a live band, and you guys all know that. So, we're going to actually need your help on this, because we've produced something that we can't play live, which is a bit weird for us. And you know what was funny? We did most of the stuff, like a couple of songs, there's one drum take, and, you know, you're talking about massive sections of vocals where there's no edits, you know, we, we, we treated Pro Tools like tape on this recording, we recorded 12 songs in 12 days, but this was the song that took the longest and kind of the beat got a bit frustrated. Jared was uh, engineering on the album, uh, he also has a live sound, and he had uh, two songs that were all particularly click-tracked, uh, Burnout and the, uh, the instrumental, and it's funny how once you get out of what we do, it was like a real learning process for us to try and get it right, I suppose. And I think we did on the record, but now we need your help. So it's a clap along thing. Hey. Keep that going hip hop style all the way through. Slave single. So has anyone got the slave single? Yeah. yeah. We did a live recording of this at PBS and we've produced it. Not much has changed, but um, it's Mondo Fat. Please don't make a little noise. I found a place for home. 
speakers because uh, this track's got an amazing ditch player on it uh, called Johnny Lacey and he came in and uh, he just blew the session apart in like half an hour. It was, ama- it was one of the most amazing... Yeah, um, it sort of just came in in half an hour and just did it. We tried to play it for you today, we tried to rehearse it so we could play it live but without uh, Johnny being here it just didn't feel the same so we just wanted to just crank it and then we'll play the last song on the album after that. This session was unbelievable. There's some YouTube footage of the type in Mammal Studio blogs and um, it was just crazy what he did. He walked in and just... 
kinds of music that I've never heard before. Uh, thanks a lot to Jared Heeman, who actually was just the hugest inspiration on this album and was the engineer on this record. Big round of applause for Jared for making the record happen. Uh, thanks to Doug and Mel and Peyton for having us in uh, their shop. It's been sensational. And we will get your floor fixed. Thank you to all you guys for coming along and buying the record and supporting us. Like, we appreciate it so much. It's the last song on the record, and it's called Oh, sure, yes. <laughs> Song's called Living in Sin. <laughs> Tell me how does it feel now you 